Hi, I'm going to quickly show you some of the drainage design features in Site3D. Now, we have this uh, drainage tools toolbar here, and on this one we have quite a few features. So we have our uh, toggle switches to work in storm or foul. We have our uh, new drainage run buttons, uh, add manholes, moon for manholes, etc. Properties of the conduits and manholes. We also have some long sectioning and some setting out information. So, what I'm going to do first is add a new drainage run on there. Now this tool is uh, allows us to click and add manholes on and the pipes between them. So what we want to do here is add a run on and position the manholes as we need. So I'm going to click one over here. As you see, as I move the mouse around, the uh, number next to the mouse is the length of that pipe. So it actually lets us monitor how long the pipe is. So if we have a maximum distance that we want to go, like 90 meters, then we can make sure that we're within that. So I'm going to add a few more on and finish the uh, manual run at the top here. Right click and hit quick command. So that's one run added. I'll add a couple more just to sort of give you a, a good overview of what's going on. So we use the same tool, do exactly what we just did, position the manholes where we want them. And as I get near the manhole I've added before, it automatically latches to it. There we go. So I'm going to hit uh, new drainage run, do exactly what I just did. And again, automatically latch that one to it. So have a quick overview of what we've just added. We've got one run that goes up here and we've got another run here and another run here. Now you can see in the plan view, we've got two manholes which are highlighted in red. That is uh, showing me that they don't drain anywhere. So I should uh, explain. When the manholes are added, it uses the design level or the survey level uh, to calculate its cover level and then adds the invert of that manhole at 1.2 metres below that cover level. Gives you a, a uh, an initial levelling of the manholes. Obviously then you'd need to go and properly level those yourself, which I'll just show you a uh, quick way of doing that now. So the way to do that would be to go into the uh, long section and either of an individual pipe or of uh, a run, or we can actually do it for a road. So if I go to the centerline tools and go to the uh, show long section toolbar, I can then pick a road like this one here, show the long section of that road, and it has the drainage automatically projected onto it. So you can see that uh, concrete protection here has been automatically added and ca uh, calculated and added because the pipe and the ground between the two manholes here dips below 1.2 meters minimum cover. So to remove all that kind of thing, what we want to do is go into our drainage toolbar on the long section view here, and we can either set the um, gradient of, a, of this run, or I can set the gradient of a pipe, or I can just use the move manhole vertical button and um, drag them down a bit. So this is sort of by eye, it gives you an understanding of how flexible you can be. You can get them to somewhere where you need them to be and then you can tweak them from there. So I've just brought those down. This is these ones here. Now obviously all of the annotation that goes with that is has automatically updated as well. Right, so that's one way of um, going into the long section of a pipe and, sh and editing the uh, manhole levels. The other way is in the uh, drainage toolbar, we have our show long section between two manholes. So if I click this one, it's now wanting me to pick two manholes. So if I pick this one here and then pick the one at the top end here, this is now a direct section of the pipes. So it's not projected, it is actual length. So we have the same toolbar in here, move manhole, we can do whatever we need to. So we're a little bit shallow here, so if I bring that down, you can see we can minimize the uh, concrete protection, but also not go too deep and cost more money in uh, excavation. So, still have this red manhole down the bottom here. I'll explain that one in a minute, or I'll explain how to um, resolve that in a minute. I will do the final one here. So if I level this one using the same uh, uh, section between two manholes, so pick the manhole here and the manhole here so we can see the full run. We can see that's why this is highlighting red, because it flows back down, because obviously 
if I look at the uh, uh, ground levels here in um, in height shading, uh, this sort of purple, light purple colour here is is high, and the dark purple down here is low. So it's it's flowing this way and that way. So that's why that manhole here has been put down vertically, is because the levels seem to go that way anyway. So what we'd want to do here is exactly what we did before: move manhole, and I'm going to bring this one down and work it out that way. So obviously I could set the um, gradient of a run as well. I could say between here and here is at 1 in 150 or something like that. I'm just going to do it by eye for the moment just for speed. So once we've done that, we've now only got one manhole here highlighted in red, which is great. Um, all of the drainage annotations should be now pointing towards that one manhole and if I go to the manhole properties and pick that one there we can change its name to say outfall I could change its cover level if I wanted to by default as I said they are automatically calculated from the design or from the survey depending on which it's over uh, but I can manually specify that if I wanted to uh, we can specify its invert level which uh, we can manually choose its diameter and a whole raft of other things that we can choose. In this case, I just want to tick it as an outfall. And there we go. So, if I wanted to, I could also add a catch pit on here now as well, if I wanted to, but uh, I'll leave that. So, okay. And now you'll notice it's now highlighting in green. So the green one is our outfall. So if I go to the 3D view here, now obviously the ground is hiding the... Um, the, the drainage underneath it. So if I turn that off and then zoom underneath it, rotate underneath it, you can see our manholes have been added and shown in full 3D, which is great. That really helps with um, looking at what's underneath the ground, whether you're um, getting near anything collision-wise and things like that. Although Site 3D does also do uh, clash detection between the uh, storm and the foul networks anyway automatically, I won't show that one, I'll show that on a different video, but um, that is something that is done for you, so you have the confidence to get your work done. So once you've got that, then the next thing would be to put on some uh, setting out information. So we, as I said, we have our manhole schedule and drainage schedule. So the, those two are uh, slightly different, but they show similar set of information. So the first one is manhole schedule. So I'll add it on here and move it down the bottom. So. This is the uh, standard set of information you're probably very used to. So you have your manhole number or name. And you can see I renamed the outfall to be outfall. And the rest of them are all on here. You've got your uh, diameters, your types, your cover levels, your invert levels, and your easting and northings. This and the uh, drainage schedule are dynamic. So if I put the drainage schedule on quickly, just put it to the side. This one here is a... Uh, uh, an overview of each manhole so you can see it's got a top-down pictorial view of the manhole and its incoming and outgoing pipes with the cover levels and invert levels of the outgoing pipes and incoming pipes um, as I said these are dynamic so if I add on some more some more manholes you can see they update as you go so there's no need to worry that they're out of date they will automatically update so if I just get rid of those you can see they also update backwards as well so again, if I moved any of those manholes, changed their levels, etc., diameters, anything like that, these automatically update, which is really, really useful. So once you've got all that, then the next thing you probably want to do is save it out and put it into a uh, drainage uh, simulation program like MicroDrainage or Causeway Flow. So the way to do that is uh, save it out, file, save as, and you see on here we have a drainage submenu. You can export it as your uh, MicroDrainage project, your MDX. We can also save it out as SWS or FWS if your system that you're using uses those instead. We also have Causeway Flow PFD files and uh, a few others as well if you need to. So what you do is you just pick your, uh, your file format of choice. Make sure that the status is shown in green to say that it's okay to export. It's telling us this one is a valid network and you just click export and then choose a file name. Then you could load that up in your micro drainage or your whatever file format you exported it out to. So there we go. I've shown you the um, uh, drainage design features in Site3D. Thank you.